Wojtek the Soldier Bear Wojtek the Soldier Bear was a 600-pound Syrian brown bear adopted by the Polish army during World War II to take the fight against the Axis. Wojtek served as an unofficial mascot for the Polish army and was incorporated into the 22nd's official emblem. To provide food and transportation, Wojtek was eventually enlisted as a private, serving in the war and even earning a promotion. The story of Wojtek begins in April of 1942, when he was discovered in the Iranian mountains by Polish prisoners of war captured during the Soviet occupation of eastern Poland. The men were on their way from a gulag in Siberia to Alexandria, Egypt, to join the British forces for training. During their trek through the Middle East, the Polish encountered a boy with a cub who had lost his mother at the hands of hunters. Lieutenant Anatol Tarnowiecki then decided to buy the bear and take it to Egypt. For three months, the cub was nursed with condensed milk drank from a vodka bottle. The bear was eventually named Wojtek, or Happy Warrior, and instantly became an attraction. Wojtek became the unofficial army mascot and was even drawn into the 22nd's official emblem. As Wojtek grew bigger and stronger, he was trained to wrestle and salute before moving on to other duties, such as carrying ammunition or transporting goods in the front line. Photos of the era show him performing his assignments. Wojtek also grew fond of beer while working under the boiling sun of the Middle East. He also had a particular taste for lit cigarettes, often taking a puff before swallowing them entirely. The bear often broke into the food huts to satisfy his thirst and hunger. When the men trained with Origins passing as grenades, Wojtek would break into the training grounds and eat them all. In 1944, Wojtek was fully enlisted as a private in the 22nd Artillery Supply Company in order to board a British transport to Italy. Private Wojtek was plunged directly into the Battle of Monte Cassino against the German paratroopers, where he carried mortar shells and ammunition. It is said the six-foot, 485-pound bear didn't drop a single ammunition crate and was rewarded with his favorite cigarettes and beer for his resilience. Moreover, his service in the fronts earned him a promotion to the rank of colonel. Wojtek gained legendary status as he continued to serve through the end of World War II, but Polish veterans were afraid that the communist regime in Poland would use the bear as a symbol and opted to send him to Scotland instead. He retired at the Edinburgh Zoo in 1945. Wojtek died in 1963 due to esophagus damage, and a statue commemorating him can still be appreciated in Edinburgh. Liebe zum Tier In this World War II propaganda photo, Adolf Hitler is seen feeding a black ground squirrel above an inscription reading Liebe zum Tier, der Führer hat sie vor allen anderen, or Love for Animals, the Führer has it before all others. The photo was part of a concerted effort by the Nazi party to twist moral values into support for the Third Reich. It is said that Hitler was very fond of animals from a young age. His appreciation for them grew during his World War I service, where he saw numerous horses and other animals slaughtered in no man's land during cavalry charges. This fondness could also be seen in his post-war paintings when he tried to become an artist. The photo of Hitler feeding a squirrel was part of an effort by the National Socialist Party to distort moral values and bolster German support for the Third Reich. Early Nazi propaganda hailed animal rights and environmental conservation, and their causes were adopted in their platform. Hitler's views on nature were thought to be in sync with Heinrich Himmler's neo-paganism. Both men desired to get the German people more in contact with nature. Although the photo served a distinct political purpose, Hitler was known to be a devoted animal lover in real life. German shepherds and other dogs constantly accompanied him during his visits to the front lines and stayed with him while in the chancellery and various bunkers. In his private diaries, Nazi propaganda minister Joseph Goebbels is said to have noted that Hitler was a vegetarian, and he believed much of Hitler's animosity towards religion stemmed from its elevation of human values above animals. Watch out on deck. During World War II, HMS Indomitable served across the globe and saw action in both the Far East and the Mediterranean. But with global infrastructure in tatters following the war, the illustrious class carrier was later modified to serve other purposes, even transporting a rugby league team on a private voyage. HMS Indomitable was an illustrious class aircraft carrier from the British Royal Navy that was launched in 1940. 
It was modified on several occasions to hold more aircraft and supplies when World War II broke out. Captured in this photo is the training flight of a ferry swordfish biplane torpedo bomber as it drops a sleep target. Directly below, sailors on the deck of the aircraft carrier play hockey in shorts and underwear. Just like the ferry swordfish and other aircraft and vessels from pre-war England, the Indomitable was an authentic reflection of British naval and air technology before beginning militarization. HMS Indomitable served in many battles across the globe and suffered damage from two 1,100-pound bombs during a 1942 escort mission in Operation Pedestal to resupply the island of Malta. With the global infrastructure in tatters following the war, the illustrious class carrier later served as a transport, carrying Great Britain's rugby league team, nicknamed the Indomitables, on a private voyage to play in Australia in 1945. Lava Toast Mount Vesuvius is better known for the eruption that destroyed the Roman cities of Pompeii and Herculaneum in 79 BC. It is the only active volcano in Europe. Its last explosion occurred in March of 1944, when the Allies were about to break into Europe to begin the liberation of Italy and France. Taken in 1944, this photo shows U.S. Army military policemen with armfuls of bread making toast over molten lava, an improvised cooking technique made possible by the March 18th eruption of Italy's Mount Vesuvius near the Pompeii airfield. The villages of San Sebastiano, Ottaviano, and Massa di Soma were destroyed after the eruption, and thousands fled their homes to survive. The powerful eruption lasted five days and devastated the 340th Bombardment Group, claiming 75 to 88 B-25 Mitchell bombers, a number 25% greater than their worst combat losses during the Luftwaffe air raid at Corsica just two months later. Hot ash covered Pompeii airfield, flipping the B-25s on their tails, glazing the control surfaces and melting their windows. As lava flows spread further down Etna and earthquakes rocked the area, the base and the aircraft were abandoned on March 22nd. By the end of the eruption, the volcano spewed out enough material to leave Pompeii covered in a foot of ash. Give me shelter. A 1941 photo shows the equestrian statue of Peter the Great hidden under sandbags and an improvised wood shelter during the Siege of Leningrad. Called the Bronze Horseman, a 19th century legend stated that the city would never fall to an enemy as long as the statue stood. The rugged bunker was hastily constructed by the citizens to protect the monument, and over 900 days of bombings ensued. The statue of Peter the Great was commissioned by Catherine the Great to emphasize with the citizens and gain legitimacy. It was created by French sculptor Etienne Maurice Falconet. The might of the statue is symbolized by its pedestal, the Thunderstone, which at its current 1,250 tons is the largest stone ever moved by man. The citizens of Leningrad prayed that protecting the statue would hold off the German advance during their offensive in World War II. Like many European monuments, the Bronze Horsemen survived 900 days of bombing and artillery virtually untouched. More than 700,000 Axis and over a million Soviet soldiers were killed during the gruesome battle. The legendary statue of Peter the Great remains in the Senate Square in what is now called St. Petersburg, Russia. The monument pays tribute to the over one million residents that lost their lives during the costliest siege in human history. But true to the legend, the city was not taken. Please like, comment, and subscribe to our channels to watch more exciting content about little-known historical facts and tell us in the comments below what other topics you'd like us to cover.